Can I start? Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is p i p a t k a j a j a n o k o a co-organizer of uh, SAP seminar uh, series and a PhD uh, candidate at SOAS. Uh, first of all, uh, this webinar or uh, seminar is supported uh, by Southeast Asian Art uh, Academic Program or SAP and Center of Southeast Asian Uh, studies or uh, CSEAS. Uh, SAP aims uh, to understand and preserve uh, the Hindu and Buddhist art and a c c u r a t y emphasizing uh, the ancient and pre-modern period of Southeast Asia. Uh, the program uh, supported uh, many uh, scholarships, funds uh, with uh, fully uh, endo-academic posts at uh, SOAS. As well as support, uh, research, and publishing uh, initiative, uh, conferences, uh, lectures, and workshops in London and uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, so today uh, we got the the honor uh, from our speakers uh, who are going to talk about uh, their research on shipwrecks and uh, maritime networks. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, introduce uh, Apirada. Uh, Gomut or n o n g p u k uh, and Go t u n g k i a n g or Alex. Puk uh, is uh, in the final year of her doctoral studies uh, in maritime uh, archaeology at the University of Western Australia. Uh, her primary work on maritime and uh, underwater cultural heritage. Uh, has been uh, conducted uh, in close coverage. Uh, Uh, with uh, the Thai government. Uh, subsequently, uh, she expanded uh, her interest to include uh, the maritime history of Southeast Asia and the border uh, Indian Ocean. Her current uh, research focuses on the study of uh, the Phnom s u r i n shipwreck in uh, Thailand uh, in Sumusakon, uh, which is my hometown. <laughs> She aims uh, to understand the maritime uh, connections uh, of the Indian Ocean world uh, in the late uh, in the late uh, first millennium uh, CE. Uh, her presentation has uh, many uh, cheap technical terms. Uh, if uh, you want to understand more, uh, you can uh, download uh, uh, her handout uh, at SAF Facebook. I will uh, 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 download or upload in uh, Facebook uh, after uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, for Alex, uh, he served uh, as General Secretary of uh, the Southeast uh, Asian uh, Ceramic Society in Singapore during uh, 2013 to uh, 2014. I lectured uh, at the Society, uh, the Asia Research Institute, and Asian Civilizations uh, Museum. Uh, he has also presented uh, paper. As scientific conferences in Asia and Europe, uh, Alex is currently uh, head of uh, department uh, of information and international cooperation in s t i l l of uh, Imperial uh, Citadel Studies, Vietnam Academic of uh, Social Science. Uh, he is in charge, uh, in charge, sorry, in charge uh, of promoting international. Uh, cooperation in the field of archaeology and uh, Vietnamese history, organizes uh, international conferences, and is now uh, constructing uh, a, a database uh, for the institute. His work uh, includes uh, the research, classification, yeah, evaluation, and uh, compilation of scientific documents related to uh, the Thang Long uh, Imperial. Uh, citadel site uh, in Hanoi, and excavation at uh, the uh, site of uh, Champa and of El in southern uh, uh, Vietnam. Alec has uh, received a number of research fellowships and awards, including uh, the research fellowship uh, for uh, Southeast uh, Asian uh, scholars, scholars uh, at the University of Michigan. Uh, in 2013, when he worked uh, on the uh, economic integration of c h a m p a into the regional and uh, global uh, economic system during uh, 
800 to uh, 1450 CE. Uh, evidence uh, from uh, trans ceramics. He has also published uh, internationally, uh, including uh, most recently a chapter post and trade in Amaravati in Y Brancy uh, in stone. The masterpiece is of uh, the Da Nang Museum of Jam Sculpture in 2018. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the format of uh, this uh, seminar. Uh, in each uh, of uh, our speaker has uh, 40 or uh, 45 minutes uh, for presenting uh, your work or their work. And uh, the less of uh, the time around uh, 20 minutes uh, in, uh, uh, is uh, for uh, the Q&A session. If uh, anyone uh, has a question or comments, please leave or send to uh, uh, the Q&A uh, uh, chat. Uh, in Zoom, and uh, we will uh, answer uh, after uh, Alex's presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this webinar, uh, I would like to say that uh, we will uh, also record it uh, and uh, doubt and um, uh, download uh, on Facebook after the end uh, of uh, uh, this webinar. So uh, for this uh, webinar. Uh, book will uh, go to uh, present uh, your work first, and then uh, Alex will uh, be the second speaker. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you very much and uh, enjoy your uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kapikop, for our introduction. Uh, let me do the technical part, sharing the screen. All right. Um, can anyone feedback if you see my slide properly? Yeah, we see. We see. Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. Like, not my notes. <laughs> right. Let me hang this away. All right. Um, thank you again, Pickup and Sawat University for inviting me and all the organizers as well. And just hope that you guys, everyone, just well, wherever you are, although I couldn't see your reaction on my talk, but that's all right, we get used to it. So tonight I'm um, presenting the Phnom Serin Shipwreck and the cultural exchange between mainland Southeast Asia and the wider inner ocean world in the late first millennium CE. And my research, um, I try to use as variety um, evidence uh, to approach to my research. And the shipbuilding technology is the core in analyzing the in the ocean well connections based on um, selected structures. And then in the end, I will wind it up with uh, some land and regional connections. So let's start with the space of diversity. The Indian Ocean world is the, uh, well, the Indian Ocean area is, is, is a huge space bordered by three continents, Africa, Asia, Australia. And defining ocean boundary would never be simple as all oceans are connected and, and it's always cultural exchange. Within the Indian Ocean, there are diversity of politics, political system, and language as well, even more variety. And it's also diversity of religions and belief that straight, it's, it's the fundamental of people's thought and action. So it's straight and inferenced by uh, religions into social system, language, and you know everything. A natural, natural, um, and political boundary can be easier to defy, but the cultural boundary of the Indian Ocean is not. So I present Indian Ocean under the world concept. 
as intended to present it into a one sing a one world or a single entity. So I see Indian Ocean as um, a cultural area of communication, and there has been several terms that have been suggested to call this area because somehow Indian is not um, speak for the whole story. So uh, agency has been suggested as well as Afrasi and many more. So I follow McPherson, for example, using the Indian Ocean world as the one complex and distinctive world of um, human activities. So therefore, in the ocean world, in my research, we cover regions as far as Southeast Asia and East Asia. And the concept was adopted um, by a French scholar, many of you may know Baudel, um, who proposed the world of Mediterranean as a single entity with marginal inference from the outsider. But previous research of the world concept were mostly focusing on trade. But recently, um, scholars like Zeland and Himan Shuray, to name a few, are starting to expand the trade connection to include the social religion aspect and many more into um, the story of uh, the history of Indian Ocean. And Southeast Asian is also focused on statehood and Indianization, localization, that kind of connections. And I think Alex would touch upon this issue in more detail. Um, while maintaining the importance of uh, trade and profit making as a major motivation for the past people to take a race at the sea and long distance traveling, I also argue the complexity of human contacts through the study of chip building technology and the PNS is the evidence of giving more insight and insightful information for my argument. So tonight, Ponomsarinship is the focus. Um, just to let you know that somehow I use Ponomsarinship and the acronym that I use is the PNS interchangeably. So don't be too confused by that. It's the same ship. Um, for those who are not familiar with the PNS or the Phnom Serene, the first fact about this site is the name is came from the combination of the landowner's name, uh, Ms. Phnom and Mr. Serene Singh MD. The site is located near the upper coast of the present uh, Gulf of Th present day Gulf of Thailand or the lower central plain of Thailand. And on your right, you should see um, the the map reconstruction of the ancient Gulf of Thailand uh, in the last hundred years ago. Uh, the PNS could have located somewhere in the red dot here, uh, which could have been below the, um, um, the shoreline here. So the land formation and environments has been changed significantly, and that area was so um, uh, environmental dy dynamic. So through time, the site now a day has been on land and, and racing between two major river, the Tajin River on the left and Japia River just behind that picture. And it's closer to Tajin River and just about a kilometer from the shoreline and the date of the site it's around eight um sorry ninth century from the radiocarbon date and chinese ceramics and over the course of the history the in the ocean regions developed their own historical timeline so different regions different um history of course and our focus today is and the late first millennium CE, which covered um, in Abbasid uh, Caliphate in the West. And India, it's by different dynasty. And Southeast Asia, uh, many kingdoms as well, Sivijaya, Champa, Tavaravati, and late uh, Sukhasid. And up there in China, it's Tang power has almost unite the whole area. And then how 
The PNH ship have provided us the understanding of Indian Ocean well maritime connections during the time in question. I am looking at the the plank fastening method of the PNS is the most observable feature that making the term of um, the chip technology, which call stone plank technology. What I mean by stone plank, there's actually has been um, several terms that's been in use like stitching, lacing, but I use stone plank to describe these kind of um, fastening, which mean uh, the use of fiber cordage to make continuous stitching, continuous stitching over the wording and the pattern of the combination of diagonal and vertical lines look like this. So the one in Yemen and Kerala, you can see it more clearly. So this similar sewn plank pattern found all over Indian Ocean uh, shores regardless of time. And most of the planks, uh, stone plank studies relied on ethnographic information due to the survival of evidence. Um, there are only two archeological examples of full wrecks found, which are the Belitung and the Pianet ships, and both are in Southeast Asia. The Arabian Sea regions covered, in my meaning, it's covered um, the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf as well. So, and down to East Africa and the West Coast of India. So all of these area, uh, the sun plank has been identified. Up here, uh, the two top pictures, one on the left, it's um, the remains of stone plank from uh, architectures um, and also the same in Evelyn, the, 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 the other pictures. Um, these are archaeological remains from the land sites that shows um, the stone plants has uh, what's present in that area during 10 to 15th century as archaeological finds. And in the East Coast, if we looked at the zone plank fastening, it's actually presented in the western coast of um, Bay of Bengal, which is along the eastern coastline of India, Orisha, and down to um, Coromandel. Um, it is called Mansura. That's still being practiced today. And the other one is Yatradoni, found in Sri Lanka. It's recently extinct, but it's possible to study through uh, models. Now I jumped to East Asian technology, uh, shipbuilding technology, because I would like you to see the complete contrast between these two regions within the Indian Ocean well. In East Asia, um, there's very rare example of ship technology, uh, ship archaeology, but it's not impossible. We got one, which is um, Rugao ship during, uh, of the Tang period. It's actually a river, uh, a river vessel. Uh, but I would like to focus on the um, the planking system. It has complete different planking system to the Indian Ocean that we've seen just now because there is no zone, no fiber cordage, and the complicated planking uh, construction. They would have uh, in 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 East Asia. They would have a double or triple layer of planks bound together, and especially the bulkhead system. And Southeast Asia is in the area where many things, that's no one thing that happens, you know, like uh, it's, it's, it's the place of contact. Um, in this region, we see both local ship, which is the ancient ship, and the local, which is this one, it's, well, stitch bank, I, I would say it later, it's more complicated. And the stone plank, which similar to the Indian Ocean World regions, that cluster with the local 
um, lash lock vessels. And for the stitch plank, it's there is no archaeology to what I understand uh, at the moment. Uh, the only ethnography that has been found in northern Vietnam and southern China, they share within that area. And it's um, the planks are combined with individual stitching, not sewn in my meaning, which is the continuous stitching. You confuse. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we go on. Uh, so now I th hope that I was successfully present to um, the variety of chip technology in Star East Asia, where that is actually uh, in, in, the, in the ocean world. But it's actually, there are more variety of the modern ship, which I didn't. Um, touched. I would like to just focus on the the the, the cordis fastening method and to compare with what we have found in in the PNS. Next is the fun part. It's um, technical comparison. Let me start with the structure. Um, the the principal structure that giving longitudinal a lateral strength to the ship. I compare vessels uh, from uh, the the PNS de Belitum and Arthur from Indian Ocean, which is Masula from East India, Yatradoni from Sri Lanka, uh, Katuvalam, the stone plank of Kerala or West India as a representation, and Arabia Peninsula and the Matape in East Africa. So see, all of them would have used keel except for the katumbalum is only have um, a, a broad, broader um, a spatial um, border keel plank not a small keel like other and the kilson kilson is interesting because it's only been found in sewn plank archaeology and this one I put um, the question mark in the Matepe. It was an interesting um, discussion in the 80s between Robert Adams and Prince on the a block of timber in the that sitting longitudinal in the Matepe, which could be worked as a mass mass step. But it was too long to be a master. But if it's a Kilson, it's still too short to be a Kilson. So that it's still that debate is still ongoing. And I am not going to answer that. It's just leaving as a question mark. And Carling, um, Kilson and Kill may be more familiar to many of you, but Carling, it's um something that is only found well there's a trains of calling we don't felt we haven't found um the timber of of the calling yet but there was a, a, a trace that could be and if there are calling that would um the calling would present as a structure in in arabian chip next to transfer strengths the the strength across the hole, which is beam and and frame. So the framing system used all over half frame or full frame, except for Masula, there is no frame. That's frameless. Um, through beams or throat beams. Uh, there are difference between through beam and throat beam, and confusing one is protruding throat beams. <laughs> That could be, you know, look like a through beam, but it actually technically different. Uh, through beams would be could be smaller and giving less strength to the hole, but through beam it's the bigger one and stronger. Through beams has been used in Yatradoni and the Arabian Peninsula ship, similar to the PNS and and the Belitung. 
but in the Yatradoni there isn't soon. Spa, this one is interesting too. This is the model I made with um, Nick Birmingham and Tom Boschmer. The spa is a general term for any wooden or metal supports for rigging of the ship. And we put this spa as the mast, which is wrong. It's not a, a, a right setting for the spa for two reasons. So this one here, um, if the spa is meant to be rotatable, it would rotate across the hull, which is unusual. And there is no shoulder here to have um, the rigging sit on. So we're probably not a spa. And what is it? Two speculations. It could be bowsprit or dastu. Um, if it's a bowsprit, it can be either of these. It can't be both. And bowsprit appear in Yatradoni and the Arabian vessel and Matepe. And it's also found in Southeast Asia too, um, in the Borobudo uh, sculpture. And that's too, just the Arabian spatial. So when I compare everything, it's looked like, it's looked more like um, the Arabian Peninsula is more likely, but it could be similar, but it's not identical. There could be, um, that's not good. Um, there is the use of dows, um, the oblique dows used in the Arabian Sea, uh, uh, the, uh, the Arabian Peninsula vessel, and the blind dow used in Matepe, which is, it could be related or not related to Southeast Asian blind dows. That's something we have to discuss. And um, yeah, and there is no doubt found in PNS yet. But no doubts, but there's a plank with dow holes found in the PNS, but no no actual doubt yet. So this is a mysterious. Um, we're looking at the relationship between the PNS and Southeast Asia, we see um materials. Southeast Asian material or South Southeast Asian source materials um, that could be found. Uh, timber can be debatable, but Aringa Pinata is pretty much um, certain. Uh, Aringa Pinata used in the chip structure in the the in the PNS in the lash lug, and it's also associated with ceramics, torpedo jar and Chinese ceramics also had. Um, a ring up in outer rope associated to it. And the corner, the bottom corner left side is the dodgy black rope that I found in the Bellatum collection in Singapore, which hasn't been identified yet. We have to do it in the future. And well, in terms of chip technology, it seems like the China and East Asia has been cut out of the Indian Ocean world. But it's actually in Chinese take of the 14th century had mentioned the use of Varinga fiber um, for ship building. But it was a foreign ship that could be allied with a lash lug and stone plank. The Arab texts that have often been um, referred telling us that the, the Arab shipwright has traveled outside of that region to build that ship. But Unfortunately, they never mentioned that they built ship in Southeast Asia. And within the, 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 the PNS, we have seen a lot of materials on cross-cultural that could reflect cross-culture. And that could be through trade or religion. And within the cultural network, the red dot and brow dot are um, lash lock technology that um, indicating that this is a local route and to have uh, to have the PNS in the upper Gulf of Thailand it's showing that there is you know the the Arab or the Indian Ocean people have traveled and 
have a contact with local people at the local route. So the discovery of the PNS has come into the argument that the role, the maritime role of um, Tavarwati, which is the close by uh, kingdom, may have been more active than previous understanding, and the Arab may also have directly participated in, in the local route and uh, build a complex relationship with the locals. Um, beside the trading purpose, if the PNS would have been constructed or substantially repaired in Southeast Asia. They might have the the shipwrights might have been spent might have spent longer time in the region rather than just hopping on and off from port to port. They have to stay. And there are information about these are information about the lives of the people that reflecting from archaeological finds. That's not a selective recording. And these sites is important to minimize the gap knowledge that ha that is absent from the textual evidence and much more to learn from. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, presentation. Uh, I really enjoy because uh, it seems like I, I listen to uh, archaeological site in my home, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're bound to it. Yeah. So um, I think uh, we should uh, go to uh, the second uh, speaker, uh, who is uh, Alex. Um, okay. Alex, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Go on. Uh, turn on your uh, microphone, uh, Alex. Alex, you you mute. Uh, you mute uh, your microphone. Okay. Hello. <clears throat> Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, every, everybody. So, um, <clears throat> thank you, Peapart, and thank you, uh, Show Us, for inviting me and Book uh, for presenting today. And after listening to uh, Book's presentation on the Phanom Surin shipwrecks in in Thailand. So uh, now I would like to talk about the Champa's long distant cultural exchange and a view from the maritime archaeology and history and with a special um, with a special attention on the reason uh, the newly discovery uh, shipwrecks and the ceramics collection in the central of Vietnam uh, in the former territory of uh, Champa. Uh, so my name is Do Chun Dang, or uh, you can uh, or Alex Dang. Uh, so I am a researcher at the Institute of Imperial Studio Study and the Vietnam Academy of Social Science. Uh, my uh, field of research is the uh, Champa uh, history and the trading ceramic trading ceramics in Asia. <coughs> um, so uh, for my study and for my uh, presentation. Uh, my presentation today, I will focus on the <clears throat> uh, on the. Actually, I will talk about a story about the what the, about the Champa, the maritime history, uh, from the perspective of archaeology and uh, history, and my personal experience in this field. So, uh, all uh, started with a recent uh, research result. Uh, by uh, the late professor um, uh, Michael Vickery, in which he urged and he's uh, asked for a, for a, a more detailed uh, study on the uh, on the field of the maritime trade in the history of Champa, because uh, according to him, the previous study uh, more detail on such matter may help to understand the development and decline of the different Champa ports and the river valley hinterlands in accordance with the chain in demand for different products in China. Um, so uh, my 
field of study is the center of Vietnam uh, on the in the in, this, uh, in this, the coastal area of the central Vietnam, where is the former territory of the Champa Kingdom. Um, Actually, I prepare a very long and many uh, detailed slides uh, to describe about the, you know, the trading activities and the, um, the trading uh, activity between Champa and the, with the Chinese dynasty of the Tang and the Song dynasty. But uh, as, uh, um, I change a bit uh, to have more time to talk and discuss got about the collection of the ceramics uh, from the shipwreck. Uh, so this this map, uh, this map and this uh, painting, so uh, an uh, illustration of the of the connection between Champa uh, with the Tang and the, the Song uh, in the uh, during the seven uh, to the thirteenth centuries. And uh, the painting the uh, in the above of the slide, so that uh, it uh, is um, supposed to be a uh, the, the 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 picture of a, a mission envoy from Champa uh, sent to the Tang uh, Tang court in uh, um, from the historical text we have learned about the engagement of Champa into the maritime trade network. Uh, during the Tang and the Song period, and it's including the indigenous commodities and also the foreign commodities that the Champa um, kings and Champa uh, envoys sent to the Chinese dynasty. For example, the indigenous commodities here are featuring the important role of the highlanders and their upland uh, region in Champa, uh, in which they uh, in which they provide a very important and luxuries luxurious uh, commodities for their international uh, uh, markets. And Champa, Champa kings also sent um, their foreign commodity that's obtained from uh, through the long distance trade to the to China markets. For example, the the rose water from the Persian Gulf or the fan oil and the Tashi vase. Um, from the I think that from the uh, eighth or the ninth century onward. Uh, when the Arab trader or the, the Muslim uh, merchants, they establish a, a network in the Indian Ocean uh, that they, that's they, um, they uh, undertook the trade between the Western Asia to the China and they uh, created the, the so-called Arab Mediterranean by the ninth century. And uh, from that time onward, the Champa kings and Champa um, Champ people, they did uh, engage deeply into the network uh, of the Arab uh, of the Arab uh, merchants. Um, the Chinese text uh, did mention uh, many times about the connection between the Champa um, advice uh, with uh, Arab trader when they sent advice to the Chinese um, uh, coast. Uh, for example, um, in this slide, you can see that many uh, examples, like in uh, 958, Champa envoy to the Chu court were led by the uh, Busan, uh, probably Abu Hassan in the Arab uh, language. Uh, like uh, in um, 988, Husan uh, or Husain, another Muslim from Champa led the uh, 300 member to Guangzhou. Uh, by the 9th century, there are two important Arab uh, accounts mentioning about the positions and the, uh, about the position of the Champa ports. Um, the earliest one is the Kitab An Masalik Wan uh, Malalik, uh, written by uh, In uh, Huda B. And the second one is uh, Ahvan Ansin, uh, one Hind, uh, is dated around the middle of the ninth century. The first documents uh, describe about a journey of three days from the Cambodia, it's, it, it named as the Kumar, to Champa, uh, it's named as the Sun, before sailing to Annam uh, in Luchin. Uh, 
And the second one, the second account of the Arafra uh, text uh, mentioning about the journey from Katrang, probably Cambodia, to the San Chapa, and on the way uh, sailing to the Guangzhou Canton. Uh, and so both the uh, both of the documents you know, featuring the position of the Champa in the name of Sanf at a destination in their maritime uh, route of uh, during the Tang uh, period, just connecting the Arab trader uh, with the Chinese markets by the 19th century. Um, sorry. So, uh, apart from uh, the two uh, important Arab um, accounts, uh, that's um, featuring the po important position of Champa in the maritime trade network uh, by the 19th century. Uh, I started my I started my, uh, my my personal journey in finding the the exact location of uh, where was Sanf and where was Sanf and where was the important port for the trading uh, by the 19th century in Champa and previous study has uh, divided uh, Champa territory into several important uh, Nakara or the small polities, uh, including the uh, Amaravati in the in the Danang or the Guangnam uh, province nowadays, the VJR Nakara in the Bingding nowadays, the Kautara and the Panturanga in Yachang and in Lingbing Tuan today. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, based on the Chinese uh, uh, Chinese um, text, uh, by the 9th century, they featuring uh, the the position of the uh, Chan Pu Lao San, Chan Pu Lao San in the in the estuary of the Tubon River. That's uh, on the east coast of the Danang or Guangnam province uh, in the Amaravati regions. So I uh, and uh, this is a location that's uh, where uh, still there are very important archaeological remains of the Champa civilizations uh, still appear, including the very important Mitsun sanctuaries and the Dongzheng sanctuaries and also the Cha Kyo uh, citadel of the Champa uh, before the 10th century. Uh, this map prepared by uh, Anna Barry Strayer, just featuring the important um, site and uh, political centers of Champa by the 9th and 10th centuries. And I pay a, a special attention to the area of the so called Amaravati region in the Guangnam and Guangnam uh, province. <clears throat> um, now I look at the Evidence and information from the Champa inscription. Uh, I treat uh, in recent years many uh, important advancement in the field of the Champa uh, inscription and the Champa um, uh, Champa uh, inscription have uh, allowed me and other uh, researchers uh, have a better understanding of the of the, um, the 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 information about the history of Champa in the previous, uh, in the ancient times. Um, by the 9th century, the inscription of Amaravati region especially recorded the integration of the international maritime trade uh, of the Champ uh, with, uh, uh, with the outside world. For example, the Nyanbil inscription dating to early 10th century is uh, Provide a detailed account of the of a person named the Pope Lun uh, Raja Drara, the son of the queen's cousin, who had become the favorite of King Jayasimha uh, Vakman and was sent on a diplomatic mission to Java. Uh, the other one is uh, the Bang An inscription in Amaravati, also detailed the Manti. Uh, Mantitinous royal ambassadors coming from different countries to visit the charm court. Uh, and the Huakwe inscription uh, referred to an important uh, curatorial branch of the royal family with surprise with high officer to the kingdom. Uh, this is the location of the Nyanbil inscription. It's dated to the early um, 10th century.
and this uh, the Nyan Bia inscription provides the information about that uh, a person from the Champa court was sent to the Java. Uh, this uh, written in the inscription was uh, uh, Java Dipa. And this uh, map shows the location of the Bang An inscription uh, dated to the early 10th century. So apart from the information from the Chinese text, the, from the Arabic uh, text, and also from the, the, the Champa inscription, uh, I pay special attention to the Tubon River network. Uh, and in this area, in this, uh, in this river network, uh, many archaeological excavations have been undertaken by the Vietnamese and the Japanese archaeologists. And many important sites have been uh, discovered, like for example, the Nam Tho Sen, the Ho Sa, the Boda, uh, in and around the, Ho, the present day Ho An uh, uh, city. And along the Tubon River, uh, there are many important uh, religious uh, centers, political centers, and the economic centers of the ancient Champa kingdoms. Uh, for example, uh, in the west of uh, in the west of the in the uh, uh, upland of the Tubon River is the Mission sanctuaries, and the nearby is the Chakyo citadels, or in the southern is the Dongzheng um, sanctuaries. Uh, uh, and the Kulao Cham is in the east of uh, in the east of the Ho An city. Uh, so, uh, in according to the archaeological um, research by the Vietnamese and uh, Japanese archaeologists in the previous study, uh, many important uh, trading uh, objects has been uh, recovered from uh, the site. For example, in Nam Tho Sen, in Ho Sa, or in some other site, or in Ku Lao Cham, um, archaeologists has um, found it uh, with the uh, the Changsha ceramics, with the Islamic ceramics, and with the uh, Western ideas grasses. So this is a very important clue that uh, I started my journey for my uh, my my uh, my research uh, trip to Hoi An in uh, many years recently, and especially in uh, 2013. Uh, in 2013, uh, I was um, participated uh, by. Uh, uh, Prof. Chan Ki Phuong and Ms. Duyen Nguyen, uh, two important uh, Champa uh, experts uh, who joined me for uh, chasing the vectors of the Champa's trading uh, activities in the Hoi An and the Tubon River uh, network. Um, so then we visited some museum uh, in the in town, in the Hoi An towns, and where we, we, we document the the, the, the trading ceramics are from uh, that's excavated by the archaeologists uh, earlier. For example, there are uh, the, the the photos of some some uh, and Changsha ceramics are from uh, 9th and ninth and tenth century. In the museum, they also have the fragments of the Western Asia Western Asia um, pottery and from uh, I put the a complete uh, uh, vessel here, uh, provided uh, uh, Professor John Guy uh, for a comparison that uh, uh, this kind of uh, vessel has been uh, excavated in, in in Hoi An region. Uh, during our field work in uh, Hoi An region and Quang Nam. Um, I was provided uh, an important information is about the, 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 the finding of the dinar coins uh, found uh, near the Chakyo Citadel and this photo provided by the late, uh, uh, um, the late father uh, Nguyen Chiang Tang. And when I, uh, the, the, up, the above photos uh, is uh, Abbasid gold coin uh, from the, is uh, displaying at the British Museum. So, you can see that it's uh, quite similar. And this is the, this type of uh, the Abbasid gold coins has been very popular in the Western idea and even in the East of the Africa during the ninth century. 
Uh, after uh, we did the research in Hoi An and the Quang Nam region, we moved uh, further to the south to the Quang Ngai, to the Quang Ngai province uh, in the south of uh, Hoi An and in the north of the Big Ding province. Uh, the map here provide uh, the the map here provided by uh, Anne Barry Strayer, and the photo is uh, I I took during my field work. And in this area, there are important uh, citadel. It's called the Chosa Citadel, and the Kori, the important uh, ancient port of the Champa, uh, previous uh, to the seventh uh, uh, century. Uh, the photo uh, taken from the Lisan Island. And in Quang Ngai province, I had uh, uh, I, I had a chance to meet with uh, Mr. Lam Zhu Sing, a very famous uh, collector in Quang Ngai province and in central Vietnam. And uh, during this um, during this visit, he introduced me many important findings from uh, his collection, including many uh, many shipwrecks, uh, remains, not only one, but I, I think that there are around, around uh, three or four uh, ships, uh, remains, uh, different uh, ships in his collection. For example, this one is a, uh, is a, a remains of the about 18th or the 19th century shipwrecks. And during this um, this few trip, I have a great opportunity to study and uh, to 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 uh, have a um, to to touch the object and have opportunity to study the object from the the so called Chotan shipwrecks in the Quang Ngai province, and the shipwreck this shipwreck was um, uh, was uh, found by. Um, local fishermen and during the 19 uh, during the uh, 2009 to 2012 and all was uh, uh, collected by uh, Mr. Lam Zhu Singh and is all now are put it in his uh, private collection or private museum in his in in his uh, homeland now in Quang Ngai province and I did visit here this collection again in uh, 2014 and 2000 uh, Seventeen. As it map, so the location of the the location of the Jotun ship, right? That I will uh, talk uh, in detail in the later slides. So this is me uh, when I first uh, visited him in two thousand twelve, and uh, with many important uh, uh, ceramic stars. But to be honest, by that time, to, in 2012, I did not know much about the ceramics. Just until I I met this collection and I took uh, many photos from the from the from uh, Mr. Singh's collection. Then I brought back to Singapore. By that time, I was in Singapore and I studied under Prof. John Mixik and Prof. Locker. Uh, so when I bring all the photo back to Singapore and consulted with Prof. Uh, John Mixik, he encouraged me uh, going back to Vietnam and do a detailed um, study about this uh, important um, collection. So and then I followed his uh, guidance and went back to Vietnam uh, and stayed there for several months and traveling. Uh, uh, along the coast of Vietnam to find more evidence and especially to study this collection. And also by that time in 2000, uh, during uh, late 2012 and 2013, uh, the late professor Nisi Mura also uh, uh, encountered with this collection and he spent uh, many, uh, a lot of time studying uh, uh, this uh, collection uh, with me the same. And, uh, professor, uh, the late uh, Professor Nishimura uh, has uh, uh, had, a had a very detailed plan for studying this uh, collection and for promoting the values of this collection. Uh, of which he dated back to the 9th century, and he uh, his uh, uh, he also. Uh, Play, uh, he also uh, play, paid a very great attention to this. Um, but uh, 
the late Professor Nishimura, he certainly passed away uh, in the, uh, in, I think that by mid of the, the 2013. And after his, uh, after he passed away, uh, his wife, Dr. Noriko, uh, and other Vietnamese and Japanese um, researcher continue to take over this uh, task. So, uh, in the for the Chotan shipwreck, uh, according to Chun Kimura, a member of the Nishimura project and his team, uh, there are more than uh, 40 ship timbers has been recovered and uh, put into the collection of Mr. Seng, and it including the planks and the flames, the hoon remains, the wooden ankles, the total length of the original king timber is about uh, 2000, uh, uh, 22 uh, matches. And so, uh, this, uh, Chun Kimura concludes that uh, the, the, the total length of the, the ship could be around uh, 25 or 26 matches. Uh, so, according to the Nishimura projects, although there are some distinctive characteristics in the structure of the Chotan ship, the overall structure features of the Hun represent a type of the ship built using an indigenous shipbuilding technology of Southeast Asia. Here are some photos uh, of the, the ship timbers of the Chotan shipwreck. Because I'm not an expert in the field of the of the ship and the ship technology, so I just put some uh, slide and some photo here for the reference, uh, and I will pay more attention on the collection of the ceramics. Uh, Uh, the Nishimura project teams, they have a very, they, they form a very good uh, teams of researcher and they have a very detailed study on this uh, collection. And according to Nishimura project team, the, there are many inscrips, inscriptions on the base of the pottery jars and the basins with two types of the inside and the ink inscription are very stimulating. Uh, the total size as well as the uh, the total of the inside inscription was uh, 147. This is this number was counted by uh, 2015. And more than 400 of the sites with the ink inscription, uh, including the 19th um, inscription from in Chinese language. Uh, 27 Arabic uh, script uh, inscription and more than 200 Indic script and uh, almost 200 stars that remain unidentifiable. Uh, from this collection, from this uh, ceramic collection and especially, especially the Indic inscription on the pottery, uh, there are important information information that the the is uh, figuring the the term ambarak ambarak uh, in the indic uh, language indic script and this is, this finding was uh was provided by noriko and her teams and the ambaraks was an uh, ancient part of the seraph on the persian Gulf, as you can see on the map uh, in the west in the western asia uh, in in the in the Persian Gulf, a well-known destination of the maritime trade route during the Tang period. Uh, here is the here is the photo uh, and the image of the Ambarak uh, script. Um, during my during my um, study trip, I took uh, many photo and close study on the. A portion of the Arabic uh, inscription, uh, and most of the Arabic inscription was uh, painted or written on the on the base of the Guangdong Guangdong uh, basins, uh, as you can see in uh, this slide. And I I brought back the photo uh, back to Singapore, and I have the discussion with uh, Professor Michael Finner, who uh, by by the time was still in uh, Singapore, and uh, Prof. Michael Finner, uh, who has generously helped me to translate uh, the inscription, uh, and according to him, and he 
uh, the inscription, uh, this translation was provided uh, by him. So, uh, so according to Prof. Fiener, this inscription was uh, read at the uh, Amdada Dadu Muhammad Wa Dafa, which could be translated as uh, to a Dadu a Muhammad and to resist or watch off something. Um, there, are, there are many, many uh, fragments of the basins uh, with uh, this kind of the, uh, Arabic inscription. And I think that there are more uh, many um, detailed study is needed in the near future. And the Arabic inscription are mainly and with a six pointed or five pointed star and the six pointed star could be interpreted as the seal of Solomon, an emblem that was uh, ubiquitous across the medieval and early modern Muslim world and carry with its magical and talismanic qualities in many contexts. In this collection, uh, I also found many uh, unidentified scripts that uh, I have shared this, uh, this information with many experts around the world, but it's still uh, hard to recognize the script. It could be the ancient charm, it could be ancient Japanese, but uh, definitely uh, no final conclusion has been uh, uh, yielded. Uh, for there, the ceramic, the Chinese ceramic in this uh, from this um, collection is very huge, and it's come from uh, it was uh, originated from many kings in China by the 9th century. The first collection is the Ting and Sing white gray ceramic uh, from in the northern China, and this uh, one of the largest collection in this. Uh, uh, in in the shipwreck, in the Chotan shipwreck. The second, the second last of the uh, the second um, group of the Chinese ceramic is uh, the Changsha ware from the Tongquan Kings uh, in the Hunan province uh, in central China. So previously in Vietnam, uh, in central Vietnam, for example, in Kulao Cham or in Hoi An, uh, archaeologists has unearthed uh, several pieces of the Changsha wares. Uh, but uh, for this collection, um, we could see that a huge collection of the Changsha wares has, has been uh, recover uh, in central uh, in Champa. Uh, here are some other um, example of the Changsha wares. So mostly the Champa, uh, the Changsha wares was uh, the the bow, the the bows like this. And we can see that uh, many people said it could be influenced from the Jun style. Uh, this uh, important object is uh, uh, this is from the Chotan uh, right uh, is from the Changsha West and uh, there uh, we could see that the uh, have a comparative view with the the, for the with the this is on the left uh, that is the this is the stone paste this is made in Iran uh, by the ninth century so from um, this could be assumed that uh, this kind, this type of disease and uh, uh, ceramics could be produced uh, and provided for the uh, Western Asia of the markets. In this collection, we also could see uh, a huge um, number of the Guangdong uh, ceramics, uh, especially the basins and uh, the hills jars from the uh, in southern uh, China. Here are some sample of the Guangdong uh, hills jars uh, with the ceramic, uh, well, with the Chinese uh, character on their uh, shoulder. And it's very interestingly to, to say that um, most of the inscription, including the Arabic inscription, the Chinese inscription, and the Indic inscription, 
Gibson uh, were written on the the Guangdong West. For example, this uh, this uh, Arabic inscription were written on the Guangdong basins. So we could see that some was living in the Guangdong region. Uh, 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 by nice entry and they and they, uh, in this collection also have uh, not so uh, have a group of uh, the Jue Jue in and Jue Chang province in the central uh, China and. And this uh, the jewelry was uh, also an important um, important uh, products uh, for the uh, trade during the ancient time, and it also appear in this collection. Um, although the number is not uh, as abandoned as the the, the Ding Xing and the Changsha wares. Uh, I also took some photo and. The photo, some are uh, provided by uh, Mr. Lam Du Seng, and uh, I put it here. It uh, could be the Indian jars or Indian wares, um, because we, according to the Indian text and Indian uh, um, documents, our, we could see that the Indian uh, um, pottery also appear on the maritime uh, trading ships, uh, and this was uh, brought to the South Asia uh, in the ancient time. For example, this painting on the on the right uh, show that the uh, the Archanta painting shows a bird carrying the post on board. And in this collection, we also uh, found uh, a number of the the intact and the fragment of this type of the, the black gray uh, jar. But the, actually, I put in the, the the question mark here because uh, maybe later in uh, during the Q and A session, I would like to have the uh, more comments and uh, suggestion about discussion about this uh, uh, this black grace uh, uh, pottery. So, um, so. Where could be the next destination of the ship if it was uh, lucky enough to, to go through the, the, the coast of Vietnam? Uh, so uh, I sketch out the tentative itinerary of the unfortunate uh, Chotan ship as follow. Uh, so the ship is uh, started the journey from the port of uh, Guangzhou, where the Arab and the Persian trader has firmly established uh, a trading colony uh, by the end of the Tang period. And the ship by core at the Hainan coast for fresh water and goods before arriving at the coast of Champa uh, in the Kulao Cham and then uh, the Kwangai, uh, Kwangai province coast. Although the Chotan ship was unfortunately shanked off the coast of Kwangai, roughly uh, 100 kilometers of the Tubon Etri and the Kulao Cham island, I, however, believe that this vessel, uh, this ship, had core at either Gulao Cham Island or the Tubon River estuary before set sail to the south. So after leaving the after leaving the court of the Gulao Cham or the Tubon River, the ship was uh, uh, sank uh, due to either a desperately ocean storm or hitting the reef. The latter reason appears to be more reasonable when we note as many shipwrecks had been discovered discover off the coast of Kwangai in recent years. If the ship would not unfortunately sink, its next destination would probably be the mercantile port of the Nakara Panduranga in the south of Champa before leaving for the Pulau, Pul, Pulau Kondo or the Kondao in the present day uh, name. And after leaving the Sea of Champa, this ship might follow the same itinerary of the contemporary Belitung ship and just might anchor at a mercantile port of Java Sea. And the abundance of the Arabic and the Indic inscription written on the recovered ceramics suggest that the final destination of this ship would like 
possibly be the Persian Gulf or more precisely the Ambarak in the north of the ancient Syria port, if the information from the Indic inscription are accurate. Uh, and I went back to my previous slide here that uh, my, my uh, because uh, I said that if the ship would not unfortunately shunk, its next destination would be the Pulau condo, right? In the, 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 the yellow color uh, circle. Uh, and very um, very important to note that uh, in just in just last year or maybe uh, yeah just last year uh, a new shipwreck has been discovered in Kondao or Pulau Kondo or, or islands and this is very important information and it could link uh, with the Chotan shipwreck and the Belitung shipwreck because there is is a um, uh, it's brought along a huge uh, collection of the Tang uh, period objects, especially the the, the ceramics like uh, you can you could see on the slide. Um, just not many people pay attention to these uh, important findings, uh, but uh, when after I received the information from uh, Dr. Huang Angtun uh, and Prof. Jin Da Shu from the Beijing University, I, I, I to be honest, I has been uh, to this area, been I just, I just searched online and collect the material from my colleagues. But uh, here are some uh, photo and uh, of the the the, the ceramics. Uh, uh, from the Kondao shipwrecks uh, provided by uh, Dr. Huang Engtun, by Dr. Uh, uh, by uh, Professor Chin Ta Su and some other friends in southern Vietnam. For example, you can see in this collection um, uh, the samples of the thing and thing where the white gray uh, thing and thing where that's quite similar to the the Chotan shipwreck in central Vietnam. And this, this uh, provide the uh, it's good uh, see uh, an evidence to show that uh, this ship and this collection dated dated back to the ninth century. Here's some sample of the Chang Sa wares from the collection, and this type of the 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 green wares are uh, uh, portraits. It's very uh, and according to Prof. Chin Ta Shu, these wares were very uh, of a high standard, very high standard for exportation and the dating is, is much is even earlier than the Belitung ship and he uh, according to Prof. Uh, Jin Ta Shu uh, this ship this ship right could be dated to the end uh, of the 8th century or early of the 9th century and could be the earliest uh, the earliest um, uh, ship right found in the uh, in the in the South Asian uh, seas. Uh, so now, for we have the evidence of the three shipwrecks uh, uh, during this um, during this seminar. Like uh, at first, I discussed about the Chotan shipwreck and its itinerary, and we have the evidence of the Gondao shipwreck at a at a middle point on the on the maritime trade route from the China to the South Asia. And from Kondao or from Pulau Kondo, there are two ways. Or may, there are not only two ways, but there are many other, are many, uh, many uh, different ways for the next destination. For example, one destination could be the the, the Thailand Thailand Gulf. Uh, that's the uh, from uh, uh, the shipwreck that uh, book just has uh, presented. And the second destination could be the Java Sea, where the Belitung shipwreck has uh, shown off. And from Champa seas and South Asian seas, the shipwrecks, uh, the ship could sail uh, to the Indian Ocean, and the last destination could be the Sri port in the Persian Gulf. And this map shows the, the the connection, the maritime link in the ancient uh, in the ancient um, uh, maritime trade route, uh, based on the uh, shipwrecks and the ceramic uh, data. Uh, so now I come to my conclusions that uh, Champa uh, 
Charm Pass um, was an, um, based on the ancient Chinese uh, historical texts, Arab, uh, Arabic uh, texts, and now the archaeological and shipwreck uh, um, evidence. We, we, sh we, we can see that Champa uh, did engage uh, um, closely into the maritime trade networks of Asia uh, during the 9th and 10th centuries. And this important role uh, is uh, thanks to the geographical positions uh, of Champa in the uh, of Champa. Uh, and it's also due to the nautical advancement uh, during that period that uh, most of the ships and uh, vessels, they have to sail along the coast and they have to call at uh, uh, many uh, mercantile ports uh, along the coast. And also Champao uh, provide many important luxury uh, local products for international markets. And Champa, uh, Champa kings and Champa courts, they also have the uh, in important policy toward the foreign trade with the international markets and uh, the prosperity of the uh, of the trade with the international trader has uh, contributed to the prosperity of the Amaravati region by the 9th and 10th century uh, with featuring the uh, the, the Chakyo Citadel and Dongzheng uh, uh, Sanctuary and the Mission Sanctuary in Amaravati. And uh, for my, from my um, from my um, presentation, I could conclude that the shipwrecks and the ceramic could play a very important role uh, for rewriting or for reconstructing the maritime history of Champa. Uh, we can see that the shipwreck, we could uh, uh, have a comparative uh, perspective with the Belitung shipwreck and other shipwreck in the region so that we, can, we could construct a, a, a network of the exchange and uh, uh, trading uh, in the ancient uh, period. And uh, the, the trading ceramic for many regions like from China and India, West Asia, also uh, have to set uh, new light on the history of Champa and the region. So, uh, no, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Alex, uh, uh, for your presentation. It's like a, a wonderful uh, information uh, for for me because uh, now I'm I'm uh, looking uh, for understand like uh, uh, Chinese uh, ceramic. Uh, I just uh, excavated uh, my archaeological site uh, in Thailand last year uh, and found uh, many uh, Tang and uh, Southern Song uh, ceramic in my size. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you, uh, Book and Alex, uh, uh, for your presentations. Uh, today, it seems like uh, uh, we need uh, to reconsider um, uh, the role of uh, Arab Tawalti Champa and um, and um, like uh, China uh, in trade and uh, um, and and see uh, that and we can see uh, the network uh, of uh, trade in uh, the global uh, perspective. So uh, we we have a Q and A um, uh, from our audience. Uh, the, the 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 first two uh, question is uh, for for book and uh, the. The last one, the two two patient or two or three three patient for, um, uh, for for Alex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want to? Uh, I will uh, read, uh, the question uh to the book and um, uh, you you uh, answer uh, the question. So uh, the first question is uh for for book. Uh, can you identify the technology technology of Early Kunlun uh, Mon or Mon Khmer uh, sailing ship, which is uh, mentioned in um, 54th uh, chapter of Liang Chu uh, Chronicles. Can, can yep. you answer that is question? Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question and thank you for reading it out loud. Um, 
since I am looking at archaeology as the priority and focus of my study and text normally this help me understand what is going on in the past and what I found by studying textual evidence whether it's Arab Indian or or Chinese um, firstly I don't have ability and access to the the primary source like the the original text because that's my limitation that I couldn't read or the ancient um, language and the second thing was I have to uh, understand the text from um, what people have already studied and interpreted and what I found normally it does uh, textual evidence and historical records cannot use to identify ship technology or or structure in a very technical way like to say what kind of ship is that it would normally just say um ship that bow by cordage and as i presented in the presentation there's so many kind of well at least three kind of um fiber cordages in ship structure in the in the ocean world and to identify Gunlun ship, I think there's been study that relate to um, large luck more than stone plank because large luck has been identified in Southeast Asia, all over Southeast Asia, and the number of them are much greater that could say, and, and the, the distribution of it has been restricted to um, Southeast Asia. So it's safe to say that lash luck is Southeast Asian technology. Um, but um, to identify the ship by the text, I don't think it's, um, it's easy to do or even possible to do. Um, to answer your questions, no, I can't. Thank you, Paul. I think uh, the question is uh, try to, um, um, uh, want, to want to know uh, the local uh, ship uh, in uh, Southeast Asia uh, for yeah, training. Yeah, that is large log, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the second question, question. Uh, do we know anything uh, about uh, the cargo uh, volume of these ships? And have you seen uh, in your uh, work if these ships are uh, seen, uh, systematically uh, beach. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, first, the cargo um, on the PNS. The cargo is really the the number of cargo really small, comparing to the Bellatum, which I think is related to where the ships sit um, located and how it was sunk um, in the past. And these questions related to the environment scene in, in the ninth century. Um, there was a study about the, well, there was an attempt to reconstruct the environment of um, that area, not particularly um, the wreck site yet. And the conclusion came as the area would have been um, the shallow water and it's it's um, consistent with what where the ship is located now under the uh, the mud and it's still under the water table if the the uh, the sea uh, the sea level hasn't changed significantly so the ship probably be underwater that's how I understand it and it's located close by the river and there was a study that uh, the Tajin River had shifted the course away from the site so probably in the past it was closer and anyway the the site would be um, reachable at that time whether it's um, I, I don't know how it sunk uh, so we, we haven't looked into that yet and I likely believe that it's not intentionally beach, but it's still a possibility 
if we look closer and we have more evidence to to identify um, the case. And um, and that related to why the uh, the the PNS has so few of uh, cargo left. Mm -hmm. Did I get all the questions? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Uh, the next uh, question for Alex. Uh, can you possibly uh, explain ex on the trade of ceramics uh, to the Philippines? Are the Chinese ceramics uh, which are found in the uh, Philippines ever uh, traded uh, via Jampa? There is a strong connection with uh, Jampa Go and uh, Philippine Go of the uh, 10 to uh, 12 CE. Uh, can you expand, explain or explain anything uh, on this trade? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need question. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the... Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. It's a tough question from the Leslie Pullen, right? Pullen. Um, yes. Actually, uh, a couple of months ago, I did a, an, a webinar for the uh, Philippine uh, Filipino College uh, uh, after the invitation by Jopper from the uh, mu uh, from the museum in the Philippines, and I could put the link of the of the webinar uh, for you. Uh, that's uh, drop me a message. Uh, I could um, share the link uh, in which uh, during that uh, presentation and this webinar, I, I spent two hours to discuss about the, the, the link, uh, the trade uh, link between uh, Champa and Daiviet to the Philippine uh, archipelagos. But uh, actually, I, pay more, I paid more attention on the later period during the um, uh, 15th centuries uh, and uh, and 16 centuries, but for this, um, for the question, um, it's very hard to say that uh, there is any connection between Champa and the Philippines uh, during the 9th and 10th century, uh, from the from the perspective of the ceramic uh, exchange, because uh, for me, I uh, my knowledge uh, about the 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 Tang the Tang and Song uh, ceramic in the Philippines is very limited. And even though the, the the Chinese text also mentioned about the connection of the go and go exchange between Champa and the Butuan by the uh, during the Song periods, but for the material uh, for like the ceramic uh, evidence, I I could not say anything uh, at the moment. But um, during our discussion about the about the the, the route of the ship uh, by the Tang period, uh, so our I tend to think that uh, the ship could be served from the southern uh, southern uh, port of China to Champa and then to the South Asia like Borneo or the Ma Zavasi and and then from the Zavasi they they sail uh, uh, they sail north to the Philippine archipelago just uh, because uh, during the Tang period, the nautical advancement uh, did not allow that uh, uh, a direct serve from the Champa uh, to uh, Philippine archipelago. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question from uh, Ian McCann uh, for uh, Alex. Uh, what do you see as uh, the way forward to investigate the link uh, inscriptions on uh, the base of the post? Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, the, the collection of the ink inscription in the Chotan shipwreck, I think, is very, very important for me and for many other researchers in studying the, uh, the history and the, the, the exchange of the Champa with the, with the other part of Avia. And I personally, I did uh, took photo and did uh, some uh, personal study uh, on this collection, but it's not the complete uh, study. Uh, and I think that I will, uh, with the assistance from uh, the owner of the collection, uh, because we have a very good relationship, uh, uh, 
I and other researcher have to go back to this collection and uh, and and uh, to do more research on this collection of the inscription. Uh, actually, uh, the Nishimura project team they did form a very good team uh, with many experts of the ancient uh, ancient uh, language uh, from Japan, uh, and they did um, they did uh, provide many uh, important information about this uh, collection and uh, information from the ancient script like I presented in during and introduced during uh, my presentation uh, but for a more more detailed study is still needed uh, but uh, we we need time because for me uh, it's quite busy with the work in hanoi so i, I still find a, a, i still find a, a suitable uh, period of time to going back to this um, collection to do more research and because it's a huge very very huge collection of um, ceramics and inscription so we need uh, a good teams uh and a, a good teams uh of knowledgeable uh experts and we need a good um uh, support uh, I, I mean the financial support to do uh and to continue this uh, research on this uh collection thanks thank you for, for uh, financial uh, support is uh, the classic uh, uh, problem in uh, accuracy <laughs> okay uh, the next question for uh, uh -huh. Um, do you think uh, your vessel are uh, abandoned or wreck? If abandoned, is there a possibility that uh, the vessel uh, may be near a shipyard? Uh, oh, okay, I will read again. Sorry. Uh, do you think uh, your vessel uh, was abandoned or wrecked? If abandoned, is there a possibility that uh, the vessel uh, may be near a shipyard? Mm. Uh, oh, you, you, you mute uh, your... Sorry. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah I, that's something I tried to look into as well. Uh, but I only could leave um, assumption and speculation. Um, Related to the the answer I had before, it's the ship is look like it has um, encountered some unfortunate events and stuck there. Um, it, in my understanding, it might have um, hit the ground and and couldn't go any further so they have to leave the, the the ship as the abandonment of the ship would have occurred after the wreckage rather than intentionally um uh get the ship there and and leave it there um because although they the the cargo it's so little it's not many cargo left over but there's still um the variety of cargo that left there that could indicate and and also other materials as well um organic materials seeds and, and everything um that could be left over of a cargo that hasn't been taken away so if it was intentionally abandoned um those material would have been recovered i I think, and and at the moment that area we hadn't seen or found yet. Um, are there significant shipwreck? We had like ten kilometers away, if I remember correctly. There has a pieces of lash lock found um, during the time of excavation, but that still in the vicinity of the PNS we haven't had anything yet well I mean ship thank you so the next question uh, for book again <laughs> uh, for uh, this question from uh, Agni uh, Mosta mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. hi presentation thank, thank, thanks uh, for that I'm wondering why did you uh, put the Baritung record as Southeast Asian uh, rather than Arabic. Does this uh, alter uh, the general comparison? 
uh, you made a shipwreck uh, from various area across Indian Ocean. Um, if I understand the question correctly, um, I group uh, the Belitung in Southeast Asia because it is where it is found. Um, and trying to relate the technology to um, the sun plant technology to um, outside of Southeast Asia. Um, but actually, I'm not looking at, I might not be clear that I didn't look at um, the origin or trying to, you know, like changing anything about the conclusion of the, the Bellatum because um, the Bellatum at the PNS has similar technology, but the condition of the site and the location of the site are giving a different story. So, yeah, I, I yeah, just because the PNS, uh, the the Bellatum is found in Southeast Asia, that's why it's grouped there. Yeah, I, I think uh, you, you group uh, by using uh, the area. Regional, uh, yes. Yeah, regional. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next question uh, from Veronica Walker. Um, uh, this question for Alex. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Um, okay, I will read it. <laughs> Thank you, Alex, uh, for such uh, a true uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I know you work on ceramics, uh, but I was wondering if you know uh, of any work uh, done on pot uh, infrastructures in Champa. Have any WAF uh, peers or uh, mooring system uh, been documented uh, to tie in with a uh, book's question? Do you think uh, chips were uh, in instead uh, of mod uh, in Champa pots? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, thank you, Renika. Uh, to be honest, the, I think that there are very limited uh, resource, uh, right, limited document in Vietnam uh, at the moment about the, the port uh, infrastructure uh, during the Champa period. Uh, for the later period, I think uh, there are some uh, document, I mean that by the 17th or 18th century, during the, the Nguyen dynasty in Vietnam, uh, there are more um, more information about the, the port infrastructure infrastructure but for the champa period i am um, very i think that's uh, not much and even for me i did uh, many uh, few work in the few uh, in the central vietnam uh, searching for the for the maritime ports uh, in in champa but uh, the the vetis the vetis and the rem the remnants is uh, not so clear uh, for example, but we have some, uh, we could uh, point out some uh, important uh, uh, possible um, possible uh, ports like in the Kulao Cham, Kulao Cham port uh, in, and also could be the Hot An uh, region in, uh, and uh, it's very clear, it's, it's quite more, uh, it's quite uh, clearer in the case of the uh, VJR in the T9 port uh, in the southern uh, part of Champa in the Bingding province. Um, but mm, the detailed study uh, is uh, still uh, uh, unclear. And one of our colleagues is uh, with, uh, Dr. Bui Van Hill. Dr. Bui Van Hill, you know, right? Uh, from the Institute of Archaeology also uh, pay attention to this issue. And he did some excavation in the in T9 or in VTR region, but he paid more attention on the later period. And I I, I don't think that uh, he found us uh, any like the 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 reps or the piles or the boring. And uh for the question about the the ship, uh, did they core at the beach instead of the moor. Um, uh, to be honest, I am not sure because I, I am not an expert. Uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, I do not know much about uh, the ship and the ship sailing technique as a ship techniques. And maybe maybe uh, uh, some other might uh, comment or say other ideas. Uh, yep. So, uh, Buka, do you have an idea about uh, the ship, uh, jump, jump? Champ chip. Mm -hmm. Me. Yes. <laughs> um, 
Well, it's very difficult to say if there is no archaeology besides lash lock, so I still keep on um, the keep, you know, like the ship of the region um, mm -hmm. as a lash lock rather than saying it's the Mon ship or, you know, like trying to um, have the ethnicity applying to the ship because in in the old days is maybe just the ship that people use within the region it's it's not about um the the particular ethnicity that use the particular ship we use a small ship uh, rather than use the the, the trade ship mm -hmm. yes it could be um in my perspective like from from the technical perspective it's the ship that's suitable for the function that yes. people use yeah uh -huh. Okay, uh, the next question uh, from John Mixic. Uh -huh. uh, this question for Hello. Alex. <laughs> okay, uh, his uh, question, what artifacts or sites uh, from the late uh, eight, uh, or early uh, ninth century have been found at on land at Gongdao? I'm not sure uh, how to pronounce. Uh -huh. Uh, that might be uh, connected uh, with a part there. Any uh, Chinese or other uh, ceramics? Mm -hmm. uh, good evening, Prof. Yuan Mixi. Uh, I hope you are, you are still fine in Singapore. And uh, as I mentioned during my presentation, uh, my study on the Chotan shipwreck uh, started uh, with the discussion uh, from with uh, Prof. Yuan Mixi uh, in 2012. And thank you very much. And for the question, uh, the information about the Kondao shipwrecks, uh, probably the Kondao shipwreck uh, is a very new information in even in Vietnam and not many uh, documents are mentioned about this. Uh, so that's very uh, a limited group of uh, scholar uh, in Vietnam um, pay attention to this and know about this shipwreck. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, a huge number of the artifacts from this shipwreck uh, has been uh, uh, scientists or uh, recover uh, illegally and brought back to Hong Kong and China. And just why I know I learned from uh, Prof. Uh, Jin Tashu uh, from Beijing that uh, many people inform him about this shipwreck. And then he asked me, and then I I, I discussed with many other uh, with with some, some other Vietnamese expert, and we we know about the 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 origins and the location of this shipwreck. In, uh, but uh, in in Kondao, Kondao is the important uh, island uh, during the uh, 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 on the maritime trade route during the during the Tang and the Song period because uh, it's man it was mentioned uh, uh, many times uh, in the text of the in the Chinese text and also even the the Arabic text. Um, uh, in, uh, along with the Kulau Cham Island. And so the Konda was an uh, important uh, um, destination for the ship uh, during the Tang and the Chong period. Um, but for the archaeological um, evidence, I mean that the excavation uh, uh, in uh, in the Kondao Island. Uh, so uh, so far, there's not much not much information about the excavation uh, about uh, in this uh, this uh, area. So maybe in the future, in the future, we need to to pay more attention and to do some uh, uh, re more research on the Kondao region um, and. In Kondao, it's not only one. Uh, it's not only one um, shipwreck, but there are some several shipwrecks. Uh, but uh, belong to the later period, like uh, during the Qing period. Uh, the Kondao uh, near the Kondao or seas also uh, found the important uh, collection of the Chinese ceramics. Um, but for this, the the, the Tang and the Song uh, period, uh, this is the first uh, evidence. From the from the ceramics, I think. Thank you, bro. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question uh, uh, from Atita Losco. Some, sorry if uh, I pronounced wrong. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you both uh, for uh, uh, you are uh, great. Uh, presentations. Uh, question to uh, Alex and Book. 
do you do you know how did uh, these ancient networks connect to ancient jam fresh water wells network along the coast of Vietnam? Uh, thank Roscoe for the question. Uh, so I like I put in the last slide uh, in the conclusion slide in my presentation uh, why the why Champa uh, important uh, on the maritime trade uh, network of the idea uh, during the time and during the time periods. The first because of its uh, geographical position in, in the middle uh, point of the maritime route, and the second. The second uh, reason is the the advancement of the nautical uh, the, uh, the, the, the 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 development of the nautical advancement uh, during the time period uh, when uh, most of the ship they 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 sail along the coast not not too far from the uh, the, the the coastal area um, or from the from the land, so that's why the the ship on. Uh, Often they set sail from the Guangdong to Hainan to the northern Vietnam and then sail to the Kulao Cham and to uh, Panturanga and then to uh, Pulau Condor and then Pulau Condor to other uh, parts of uh, South Asian seas. So I mean that uh, during the time period, the, 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 uh, the duration and the length of the maritime route uh, is, uh, is shorter than the later period uh, and uh, because of the could be the the, the due, due to the technological um, issues that's the ship they have to uh, go not too far from the coat and that's why they they had they usually call at the 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 river at trees of the champa to get the uh, the pure or uh, pure water and to get the rice uh, for their next um for their next uh, next trip to the southern uh, region that's why the water wealth in champa is so important for the um for the trader uh, during the tang period uh, but for the later period like during the ming period uh because of the development of the nautical uh, and the shipbuilding technique, uh, so maybe the 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 ship they could uh, set sail from the Guangdong and then they they go directly to the VJR and uh, and then from VJR to the South Asian seas. So they 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 do they do not need to go at or stop at many uh, local ports like in the Tang period. That's my. Uh, uh, opinion about the question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I think I'm thinking about um, uh, my family business. Mm -hmm. um, my family uh, did uh, uh, was uh, um, a fisherman uh, in 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 a small town. So uh, in in the past, when they uh, sell uh, to everywhere, they have uh, to uh, stop. Uh, at the uh, like a, uh, to find uh, the fresh water uh, every uh, two or three days, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for the next question, um, this question from from sorry from Panga, mm -hmm. uh, uh, our uh, co organizer uh, for SAP seminar. Uh, his question. Uh, is uh, putting aside uh, regions uh, outside Southeast Asia briefly. How should we see or reconstruct uh, the intra-regional trade and chip building network uh, within Southeast Asia? The second question is, uh, how was uh, the historical landscape in, the re in relation to developing uh, the agency to create or join uh, the wider uh, maritime route. Uh, uh, hope uh, the question makes sense uh, to uh, the panelists. <laughs> okay, uh, who will uh, go to answer uh, this question first? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I, I, I could go for it. Um, I think this is what we are trying to do, right, to um, integrate 
um, Southeast Asia into a wider perspective of Indian Ocean connections. And that's why the focus is not only within the region, but it's more like what a region is doing um, as a participant in the, the, the wider view. And, and it's also the nature of evidence that we are presenting today that we're focusing on the, the foreign evidence that found in Southeast Asia. So it's kind of steer um, the, present, the presentation and the theme to that, um, like, you know, it's all about uh, foreigners. Um, but it's actually, in my um, opinion, this is why we're trying to do like um, the, the, the regional connections to the other regions. And for the historical landscape, um, this is not easy to answer. Um, for my, for me, uh, the the technological perspective from the shipbuilding, we do not have. Um, well, we do have um, more evidence on the on the regional uh, local technology, which is large luck in Southeast Asia. That it's really um, giving a different technology from the PNS that. I am looking at so the the historical landscape back then in terms of maritime connections through um, the ship technology, we see the cluster of outside inference and inside region, and that is really, you know, it's not just one region and the other region. It's really linked together. So this is the 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 scene that I am seeing at the moment. Thank yep. you. So uh, Alex, do you uh, have uh, any opinion? Uh, it's very tough question. I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure that I I I totally understand. Uh, the question uh, totally or correctly understand the question and but uh, uh, yeah just uh, uh, just think about uh, how should we reconstruct the intra regional trade and the shipbuilding network within Soviet Asia. Um, although I'm not an expert on the uh, the field of the the ship uh, technology and the shipwreck, but uh, I think that's the potential the potential of the studying the shipwreck uh, within the region uh, is uh, very huge because uh, in uh, during the recent years we we have uh, recovered and understand uh, discover many shipwrecks uh, in the South Asian seas, uh, not only in Vietnam but also in Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Philippines, and that's um, the findings. Uh, Play a crucial role in uh, understanding the ancient parts of the, our reason, uh, and because uh, our historical text and historical evidence about the intra-regional trade uh, is not so clear. For example, the, how the Champa connected with the Philippines or uh, with the um, southern. Uh, with the Indonesian or Malaysian archipelago is not so clear from the historical text, but the evidence from the shipwrecks and the ceramics uh, provide us the important uh, clues and evidence uh, for studying uh, such uh, matters. And and how about the uh, and about the, the the agency to create or join the wider maritime route? Uh, I'm not sure that I, 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 my answer is uh, accurate or not, but uh, yeah, the, um, the South Asian uh, pupil, uh, we also play an uh, important role in, you know, in, in running and in undertaking uh, and uh, the, the, the trading network in, during the instant part, uh, especially with, when we look at the Malay, Malay people at the Malay people at the the middle middlemen of the agency to to to, to connect the intra region uh, uh, trade network with the outsider 
uh, with the outside uh, network like with China and especially with the Indian Ocean uh, networks. Thank you. Uh, can I add a bit? Um, in terms of intra regional connections, uh, Lashlog is a good example as a ship mm. technology. If you see my uh, the 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 lies before last, um, I've shown the map where the Lashlog has been found, and it actually indicate that um, intra connection is really busy that time. You know, during the the first millennium, and to have the PNS close to um, the land, I mean, the main land Southeast Asia is also giving um, the different picture that the Belladong has given. Um, I mean, within that route in, in, in the Gulf of Thailand, and it was has been believed to be subordinate route and local route. But once we have um, the stone plank, which we believe to be a foreign um, technology there, so it's actually um, linked and relate um, uh, the mainland Southeast Asia with the outland Southeast Asia and, you know, like the whole process of maritime connections in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. So it seems uh, I have I have uh, my reason when uh, I uh, look at uh, uh, you guys uh, slides. Uh, it seems like um, uh, uh, the trade route or the ship route uh, um, uh, sail uh, along the coast. So then um, two weeks ago, I went to uh, Long Tom uh, in Kabi province and uh, to to uh, uh, Lampo uh, in uh, Chaya. So um, over there, there are many, uh, I think, uh, Tang uh, uh, ceramics and uh, Southern Song uh, ceramics. And I also uh, found uh, many, um, like, uh, 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 beads, uh, many beads uh, from uh, India, Roman, and uh, many, uh, like, uh, regions. So um, is it possible that uh, uh, in the past, uh, they used uh, the Trans-Peninsula uh, trade route uh, for, for trade, like uh, the ship just uh, stopped uh, here uh, in somewhere in uh, Southern uh, Thai Peninsula, and then uh, they uh, uh, carry uh, the cargo and the uh, products and across to uh, uh, Andaman or Indian Ocean and uh, ship yep. uh, to uh, India. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, when we talked about uh, route, it doesn't have to be one route. Yeah. You know, it can be, or everything, anywhere possible, any way possible that people connect. We people will find a way to connect to each other, you know, in any way they can. So land route, um, coastal route, open sea route, they're all operating at the same time, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now uh, I think uh, it's time uh, that uh, we have to uh, finish. Uh, and uh, someone uh, behind you, Alex. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, she is uh, hungry. <laughs> okay, um, I have to, to say that uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, wonderful and uh, knowledgeable uh, presentations. And uh, uh, today, I think I, I learned many uh, 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 archaeological work from you. So um, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to, to uh, thank uh, uh, our staff and uh, staff and uh, Southeast Asian uh, Center of uh, SOAS uh, as well. Uh, and uh, the next, um, next uh, webinar, uh, we will uh, announce uh, in our uh, staff uh, Facebook uh, page and uh, in our website. Uh, uh, we will let uh, you know uh, soon. Thank you very much, uh, Alex and Ho. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you and to you. Thank 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 you.